JJ got his first big boy haircut today. You wanna see what sister thinks? What's up fellow journeyers? We are so ready to be heading south from Tennessee. Uh, actually, I am so ready. I have I don't think I've ever done this before when we're leaving our home base in Tennessee. I actually got the truck hooked up, ready to go the night before. Well, for two reasons, really. Maybe three reasons. <laughs> we're just, I'm just ready to go. I'm ready, I like, it's just, I've just been itching, itching to pull out of here, to get on the road, to feel the wind in my hair. I don't actually feel the wind in my hair, but you know, just that feeling of being on the road. Reason number two is we need to be pulling out by 8 a.m. this morning. It's currently 7 a.m., 8 a.m. I don't know if you've ever tried to leave with two kids. Um, yeah, this is to help us to get out of here early. And reason number three is the reason that we're leaving at 8 a.m. is we have got to go through Atlanta. And if we don't leave early, we're gonna hit rush hour in Atlanta. Ultimately, we're hoping to unpack how our travel style has changed, or at least how we're planning for our travel style to change. Now, how you travel in an RV is a big deal. Uh, some people believe in the 222 rule, which is travel 200 miles or less, arrive at your destination by 2 p.m., and then stay at least two nights once you get there. Some people like us, which was our travel style was just more of like a we're gonna just sprint 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 collapse sprint 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 collapse and it actually reminds me of this concept in this story called the 20 mile march now if you've never heard of the 20 mile march it's about two guys one named amundsen and one named scott in 1911 they wanted to race to be the first ones to reach the south pole it was 700 miles there 700 miles back scott's travel style to win this race was similar to probably our travel style in the past. <laughs> he would just go, 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 go if the weather was nice, everything's great. You know, they might go 40 miles, 60 miles, and then just once the weather got bad or they started getting worn out, they just collapsed, sometimes for days. In his journal, he'd write about being miserable, about the rain, you know, the bad weather never stopping. Amundsen, on the other hand, had a plan to go around 20 miles every day. If the weather was great, they would still stop at 20 miles. If the weather was terrible, they would push through and still stop at 20 miles. It turns out having that 20 mile marker of Amundsen and his team knowing how far they were gonna go every single day won the race for him. So they not only got to the South Pole first and then got back safely to where they came from for 1400 miles round trip, Scott got to the South Pole after Amundsen was dejected and his whole team actually perished on the 700 mile return trip uh, back to where they came from. I don't know if RV travels as treacherous as a 20 mile march was, but on our last route, we tried to do the exact same thing we'd done in the past in Colorado and could not find a place to stay. It took us like hours beyond what we thought to find somewhere, just a flat piece of land to park our RV. We didn't show or talk about this too much. We meant to show multiple things on the way back from the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. We got stuck in another situation where we were gonna book private parks on the way back. We were gonna like stay at Walmarts a couple of times. Well, these Walmarts no longer allowed overnight parking. The private parks were all booked up. We just came straight, straight back to Tennessee. Like we literally <laughs> were having a tough time finding somewhere to stay on the way back from Albuquerque. That's not to say there's nowhere to stay between Albuquerque and Nashville, but for that particular weekend at that particular time we needed, we were just over it. So today's the day that LJMJ is actually gonna change the way that it travels. We have actually booked a place to stay on the way from Tennessee to Florida. Yes, I'm a little nervous because we're riding with a lot of new stuff that we didn't have before. And so you gotta like think through, anytime you do a remodel or you put something new in your RV, you're thinking, okay, how is this gonna ride? You know, the couch in the back, I've already kind of like used an L bracket and gotten it where I don't think the couch itself is gonna move because it does not have, I mean, look at that space. It has like no room to move back here. The cushion has to be flipped up every time we move because the cushion itself does stick out too far. Not a huge deal, but one more thing to do. Same thing on this one. I've secured this one. Now, obviously the table is not going to move. It's bolted down. These are loose, but we left our chairs loose before and really it wasn't a problem. So I'm going to keep an eye on them. We might end up having to like tie those up and stuff. So we'll see. 7.30. I think we're going to make it. JJ's still asleep. Hensley's awake. What is this? Almost done in here. Truck is packed and ready to roll. Oh, the sewer. Still gonna get the sewer. Seven forty-five. Love the downward dog sleeping position here. Now, some of you may be thinking, who is this boy in JJ's bed, and what did you do with JJ? But this is actually. JJ. <laughs> it was a pretty traumatic experience, the reactions from his hair being cut. Oh man, that was 
so hard. Nathan, show a before earlier this year with all those curls and then show an after because, yeah, Hensley took it the hardest. Oh, my Mrs. Oh, oh, my no. Oh. He's dancing in front of the camera. He's proud of it. I know. It's hard to watch him be big, isn't it? She cried for about an hour straight. I need to JJ was excited. He was <laughs> he was dancing around. You want to show him your haircut? Look at oh, that hair. Is it your big boy haircut? Oh. Stretch it out, buddy. <laughs> Say, what are Stretch you guys doing to me? Uh, 756. Hey. hey, the slide's coming in. Come here. Watch out. Here it goes. Uh, a bed so big. It is a big bed. like the biggest heart ever, man. <laughs> goodbyes. Wait, we don't say it's not goodbye, it's see you later. It's so tough. Officially a fourth of the way there. Does that feel good? Yes. Yeah, this is uh kind of the new thing is I'm trying to plan out stops. Oh wow. Yes, yeah, so this is a destination. I'm actually looking up the most famous snacks to have <laughs> at a Bucky's. We can spend hours searching Which around. Which we are not doing because we still need to get to Atlanta. But the <laughs> kids, everybody has to stretch their legs at this point. Look how many wow. fuel stops there is. Um, I would usually go for an end spot. I think I can still do a regular one here and get out though. Oh, I can maybe make that turn. Let's do this. Should I say let's see what happens? It's probably not a good thing. I just have PTSD. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm cutting wide here. <laughs> I think we're going to make it. I think that guy saw my nervous face and he looked nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, this is close. We're good. I think we're good. Okay. Okay, we're good. Oh, he should be nervous for us. I'm nervous for us, too. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> A little tight. So even though Bucky's is known for their immaculate restrooms, one of the best parts of traveling in an RV is you get your own restroom with you anywhere you travel. So um, I'm going to use ours. And I didn't have to use this today. <laughs> We keep a travel john for emergencies in the truck. So the cool thing is I'm gonna top this off uh, with my fuel tank, and I think we can make it the rest of the way with St. Augustine. And then when I say fuel tank, I have our regular tank underneath, which is like 32 gallons, I think-ish. And then I've added on this tank, which is 45-ish. So technically we're supposed to have 75 plus gallons of fuel total. As far as Atlanta, it's like 12.30 now. Uh, so I'm figuring we've got an hour here, about an hour and a half from Atlanta, cutting it close. <laughs> we want to get, my goal is to start going through Atlanta traffic by 2.30 or earlier. So it's, it's going to be close, but we, the kids have got to stretch their legs. Holy cow, what's going on? Nothing looks unusual to me. I'm going to let this reset and see if it does it again. So I'll let this reset, and now it's saying it's 79 which is what it should be with 82 degrees, like <laughs> not 313 or whatever it was degrees. So we gotta get a new TPMS. Uh, that was like overstimulating. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of here, man. I gotta, they gotta let me make a left turn across two lanes. It's like a four lane highway here at Bucky's. I am excited about the snacks. <laughs>
as stressful as today was, I can't tell you how good it feels to like know we have somewhere to stay and not be pulling in a Walmart and like getting kicked out because we didn't know we could stay there and figuring it out late at night. The kids literally ran to the playground and Hensley, her words were, I can't handle it anymore. I have to go to the playground. Not, I want to go to the playground. She said, I need to go to the playground. That was her words. I need it. And we've stayed at Walmarts and we've loved Walmarts for years, but they're just becoming harder to stay at and there's nowhere for our kids to run around when we get there and after a long travel day like our kids are ready to stretch their legs and run what's the matter what's his leg are you tired baby's tired baby the baby's tired because he skipped his nap today and went and sleep in the car uh-oh So we stayed at several different harvest hosts. Uh, the check-in process is pretty similar for all of them. You just basically go into where the office, sometimes they just say just park here or park there. Uh, but you, for this one, you go into the office, you check in, and if you're not running a generator, which I would highly recommend here, you get this view at this side. If you are running a generator, you might be able to see over there, there's like a Forest River Class A way over there and you can run your generator. Now, as far as this, um, everything did pretty well. The couch actually did really well. This cabinet opened going down the road. These books were wedged behind this slide, which caused this piece to do what these pieces do. Other than that, well, in the typical, um, we're gonna have to start using a gear tile in the fridge or something. The fridge, fridge popped open. I don't know. They've got this little lock mechanism here, but somehow it seems to still come open going down the road. I really don't know why. I know, I know we, me and Marissa both double checked that thing. Ah, oh, oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Wow. I think emotionally right now, I don't want to say guilt, but like just the difference between what we see and feel and experience in a Walmart parking lot. What's that? wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know, I'm just, we're just, just watching this sunset and I don't know, they just kind of wonder how many sunsets have we missed out on. You know, this is five miles off the interstate. Sure, I'm sure there might have been a Walmart 30 seconds off the interstate. But like you get to see and feel and touch and breathe and just be a part of the area and the culture and the people and the, and the, the small businesses and the people that work here because we took the time to come here. Um, and there's just, there's something emotional about that. Speaking of emotions, I thought you went to just check things out. What did I you did. Get? I totally checked out and then swapped my card. <laughs> <laughs> they had a peach burger, so. A peach burger? Yeah. It's got like a peach sauce on it. So we shared <laughs> the dessert and Ooh. somebody licked all over it before it got out here. Licked all over it? Oh. <laughs> With a little bit of planning, it makes the day go by so much easier. I hated that I used to just kind of like chalk up travel days to kind of like a day out, but why can't it be part of the experience? And that's what these stops have allowed us to do is it's not just like this wasted day anymore. It's in a day of an experience. That's what it's about is how can I make a memory and get the most out of my travel. And yes, yeah, so the secret's out. Harvest Hosts is our new favorite way to overnight in an RV. We do think that it and Boondockers Welcome and things like that are trending upwards. And it's becoming more and more difficult to stay in Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, and a lot of the overnight places we used to stay. But let us know, what are some of your favorite places to stay in an RV when you're making these quick stops. And what about the 20 mile march? What does that look like for you? Or does that not even fit what you do And when it comes to traveling in an RV? Well, that is our journey for today. We're going to let our kids continue to get energy out until next time. We'll catch you guys later. Get that energy out. Go, 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 go. Oh, I don't know if you can drive it on the road, buddy. Run, 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 run. <laughs>